Did you never see Billy Ray Cyrus in the 90s? Is that what you're going for right now? Maybe. Corn and great landscape designs! In an increasingly competitive marketplace, one of the ways to win is with design. By differentiating your business through your creativity, you can create demand that is unique to your business. That's why we're here in Indiana to meet with two Teco pros to talk about what makes a great design. One of the businesses is larger with a dedicated design team and multiple construction crews. The other one is a smaller outfit where the owner operator also sells and designs and builds the jobs. Both people are gonna get the same questions. What makes a great design? What does the process look like? And finally, how do you take that concept to paper and then finally to the build? We're pulling up to one of the job sites right now. Pete's already there. Some construction's underway. This is gonna be a good one. Iowa can help translate to a little better. Yeah. Chewy, Jose Flores, Victor, Santiago, Gerardo. Jose, we're gonna switch you today. You're gonna go with Juan. You're gonna do a little training with Paper Pete. Ya acabamos la mucha ya de Smith. So we know that the top of this pipe is the bottom of those pavers. Phase work is very common in landscape and hardscape construction. And I'm on phase one of our project. It's about two and a half to three years old. And we started with this raised patio. Actually, it's two raised patios. There's an upper landing that leads into the sunroom and a lower landing the French doors that lead into the living space. What's neat about this are the relief walls. You can't even see. So nothing is built against the wood or the masonry veneer on the house. So there's always air circulation and no condensation built up. Just under this table here is a drain, which is very important. We're pitching all the pavement in to that drain and then out into the environment. We never run water towards a wall or towards a set of steps. Now the area I'm standing on is blue and shale gray slate texture. What's neat about it, there's a lot of our blue grandes mixed in. That's great because it fits the scale of this large masonry home. There's a lot going on in this landscape, fire, water. One of my favorites is a fire table over here and an outdoor kitchen. Hey Britt, how you doing? Good Pete. Man, you guys don't miss a trick out here. Walk me through some of these features. We try to create that environment that's feature rich with multiple destinations. So you really can gather lots of people doing lots of different things. So you start with the water bubbling rock over there. So you get the sound, the ambiance. Drowns out the noise of the neighborhood. Absolutely. Love You've it. got the fire, the natural fire pit over here. Again, gathering with those large outdoor rocks. You've got probably one of the best things in the space. Again, using fire to gather space, but in table form, repeating on the vertical, what we did right, on the horizontal Brandon, the patio. Shale gray, right? That has that slate texture yep. that matches the blue. I love that. And I love linear fire features. I love the windscreen. There's a lot of benefit to one, right? There is. You get prolonged use having that screen on there. It keeps that rich flame, allows you know oxygen move to it. Leave you, it up all winter, doesn't leave bother Leave it up all anything. winter, it doesn't bother Reflective anything. Reflective quality. I can see kids, families eating, drinking, all that kind of stuff in the environment. And our outdoor kitchen? It's got that wood-fired oven. Yes, which is a fan favorite, correct? Absolutely. Now, this isn't a pizza oven, though it's commonly called one. It is, right? because pizza isn't the only thing. It's one of the fantastic things, but you've got cast iron cooking, you've got baking products, you've got- Breakfast. It, it's endless Any possibilities. Any number of things that you can do with that. Cooking at 800 degrees is even healthier for you. Absolutely. As well, I think that's a great element in the landscape. So this shade structure is a recurring theme. We're gonna see it again, right? We will. Okay, so here's our natural transition. And this brings us out to phase two, obviously the swimming pool. But right away I notice 
We have the blue, slate texture, shale gray, but no grandes. What was your thought process there? When we were designing the patio, we, we definitely had to transition from phase one to phase two. Pool placement was key. You had some easements and stuff we were working in and around. And it was ultimately determined that for maximum spacing on this side for usability, we were gonna minimize the transitional space on the back side of the pool. What that means though, is that there wasn't a lot of space to utilize. If we had tried to evenly space those large format blue pieces within, it would have been way too busy on that back side. A large format product like that. Absolutely. 19 by 32. Correct. So we kept just the three piece, which color texture, mimic perfectly, allowed for lots of activity going around the pool. Yeah, and I can see the Villaggio Onyx Black, our bullnose shale gray, that's a recurring theme. And this is a very active area. This is moving all the time. All sorts of things going on. We got a beach there. Sun ledge, basketball, volleyball options, jumping rock, act water. You can't see it, flume for swim spa right, kind of thing. Right, swimming and, in, and, place. And, and, and yep. in place. And all that brings us over to that balanced area that you talked about and the weight of these two structures Explain to me what your thought process is it there. It kind of was that destination visually. This is form and function. This was that viewpoint down the pool. It gave you that visual stopping point where your eye went to across the pool, but it also functioned as that vantage point. Lots of kiddos running around. Parents are sitting under there. They're warm in the late in the fall if you've got you know prolonged summer. So you They're have cool. infra, you have infrared heat infrared in there. Infrared heat in there. Heats you, not the air. Absolutely, misters in there to cool you down in the really hot hot summer. And a fan, that's awesome. A fan, you've got sound, you've got light, you've got shade. Kids can do in their thing. Parents and can we balance the weight for and phase we two. Balance now we're both on sections. phase three. Can we take a look at that? Absolutely. Now we're on the other side of that sunroom. And I know that the clients, you know, parking out in this area are gonna be using the sunroom on this side. Again, our Brandon Walsh, Yale Gray, clean block technology, your cap, but that's an independent structure as well. So there's a relief wall. Do you always build them that way? 100% of the time. That's awesome. Now the front, there's a lot of activity. Let's take a look at what's going on up there. Now, Britt, up here on this project, my question is, how do you go from design to build, how do you give them the instructions they need to make sure that what you have there on paper is what gets constructed out here in the field? The first is a good plan. You gotta have a good plan with all the things in it and a proper pre-construction meeting. But when it comes out on the site, the first thing, demo. Demolition. So this is, uh, I'm guessing, 30-year-old home? Yep. Okay, so I'm guessing concrete again. It was, you're uh, indeed correct. All right, and there's two types of ready-mix concrete, cracked, Going to crack. Going to crack, that's right. So we had to get that out and it's gonna be recycled. It'll be taken yep. on a separate truckload out to a recycling facility and Correct. be done. Now, once we do that, I know your philosophy is very similar to ours in the excavation, the dirt from excavation, go ahead. It's gonna be immediately up and out of the ground and away from site. Okay, so we're not stockpiling nope. any of that here. It immediately goes into a mechanical wheelbarrow or skid Correct. steer or Correct. whatever, out to a dumpster, uh, a truck, an independent hauler, whatever, yep. and is gone from site. No piles, yep. like, as you can see around yep. the site. Fairly clean site. Anywhere, that's right, absolutely. Now, what type of soil are you dealing with in this area? As you know, this area is the wonderful world of clay. The wonderful world of clay. The worst of the worst and the predominant soil type in North America. So what are you doing to increase its bearing ability? We've got to amend the soil. Okay, what are you using? We're using clean number eights. Num okay, now you call them number eights, yep. but the industry calls them number 57. Correct. So half inch, three quarter inch, clean, clear stone. So you're integrating that into the clay and I'm assuming, now this is a point rammer. It's the BT 1400 from Bartel Global. I wouldn't typically see this in pavement, more in trenches, but you used it on this walkway? Yep, it's a nice tight space. It will work perfectly this application. Wouldn't use it on a large scale. Like a driveway or Correct. something like that. Correct. Yeah, so that would work real good. Obviously you're using a geotextile. It's a woven material and yep. you're using that. That GF5, you know, that width works perfect for this paver application. Okay, extends up the sides, yep. encapsulates the whole thing. There's really no overlap here nope. because of the width. Correct. Having right size rolls can save you a lot 100%. of time and money. Now here's your base material, right? Yep. This is uh, what you called 
Number eight. Number eight. Okay, we call number 57s, half inch, three quarter inch clean stone. So this is a hybrid installation. Correct. So we're taking a lot of the permeable pavement industry and applying it to a traditional dense grade Correct. sand set, sand yep. filled joint application. Absolutely. So that would mean your bedding layer is gonna be this chip stone here, right? Yep. What do you call it? I say number 12, oh, okay. you're gonna say, say number, number eight. eight. That's right, that's an ASTM number eight. And that's a quarter inch, maybe three eighths inch, 90% fractured face, less than 5% passing the 200 sieve. That's hardness tested. So it's not gonna degrade over time. Correct. And how much of that do you put in? One inch. One inch. Now, aren't you worried that that bedding layer will migrate down into the 57s, that open graded stone? No, because the sizes don't make sense. That's perfect. So they can't migrate down. There's no choking rate for Correct. that material. Now our walkway extends up. It's our blue three piece slate texture double Villaggio border, and then we reach a greeting square, <laughs> yeah, which is yeah. typically called a greeting circle, but this is a square area, and this is gonna be a natural transition to our next walkway, which brings me to what, what a lot of people will struggle with when it comes to an edge restraint for a hybrid installation. You can't use PVC and round non-galvanized pipes. So what are we doing? I know Mike's already working, but what are we gonna do here to make sure that, that this doesn't move. We're gonna use the Gator Extreme Edge. Okay, a poly-modified fiber reinforced concrete. Correct, you're trying to expose one inch, that one inch of bedding layer. You're trying to bring that out three to four inches. And when you trowel it on, you're going to make sure you encapsulate that paver one inch. So you've okay. technically one inch of the bedding layer, one inch of the paver, and pull out at an angle three to four inches away from. Okay, so we don't want it too high in the paver. Correct. We could get blackout, meaning there's no grass. Correct. And then it's exposed to the environment and UV rays. And it doesn't and matter what you do, the grass isn't gonna grow. It isn't gonna grow. And we want that grass to grow as part of the system. And know that you finished up top here with our landing, which is uh, our clean block technology, yep, absolutely. rock salt resistant, stain resistant, and, and that's our York cap, and you, again, with the blue and the Villaggio on the upper landing. What was your thought process there? Just kind of tying it all the way through, so we've got a similar rep repeating factor through the hole from driveway to greeting square to landing. And I see a polyurethane adhesive yep. with the flow of water, any windblown water that gets in there can sheet out. I know I'm gonna meet you on another job you in are. a little bit, I'll help Mike and I'll catch you over there. All right. Thank you, Britt. Absolutely. Can I help you here? Yeah, just pull that phone away, please. Okay. I need somebody to pull those rails. Tackle block pavers are about eight to 10,000 PSI. So this is a very hard material to cut. So when I'm cutting, right, and I'm really get, I'm getting a lot of resistance, the glue that holds the diamonds on the blade glazed over. You're gonna deglaze the blade by cutting with a softer stone. I don't need to wear attenuators. I don't need to wear a respirator. I just got to feed it in there nice and easy. And now there's no dust. You can breathe. Your ears aren't ringing. Are your ears ringing? I said, are your ears ringing? Right now, yeah. Okay. <laughs>